In this video, we're laying dual track modern mainlines with concrete ties. We fine tune colors on homemade ballast and 3D print the catenary system for super detail and 90% cost saving. And welcome to a, a video tutorial in which we will lay modern lines. Yes, uh, those with the concrete ties instead of the old wooden ties. And you guys who run three rail Merklin system know that the Merklin only have uh, the, the old type brown wooden ties in their uh, assortment but there are solutions for you as well uh, for this video uh, any cubic has given me the opportunity to to try out a, a new uh, model of their 3d printer which is called m3 plus uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, really a uh, I, if you like machines and, and want a, a, a nice machine and not just a, a plastic uh, type uh, printer, this is the pick for you. We're going to get into that in a moment. Uh, I'm putting up a link to that uh, printer so you can check it out. Uh, I also want to say a big, big thank you to a viewer who's called Roger Peterson. He lives in Sweden and he has uh, provided me, <laughs> he actually sent me a, a big box of, uh, of crushed walnut shells. Why is this? Yeah, it's actually, I'm told that it's the same material that Woodland Scenic use when they manufacture the, the medium ballast they provide in, in bags. And the, the, the idea of, of uh, doing it from the same raw material with the, basically the same end result is that you can tune the color of the ballast to match exactly the prototype you're building. And this is, uh, you know, it's, it's a big advantage. And with that, you get a 70% cost reduction as well. But of course, this, uh, these crushed walnut shells are, are, you know, they're only available in, in bigger bags. So I would say that this is, uh, is it's usable if you have a building a larger type layout. So we're kicking off laying modern lines. So here's the brand new M3 Plus resin printer from Anycubic. And the plus means extra functions. So let's switch it on. And first thing we see is that it's a color display with the option to swipe to make selection. We also see that it's connected to a cloud service through our local Wi-Fi. That means that the print process can be remotely controlled and uh, we can also watch the print process through a web camera which can be connected to the printer as well. The cloud service also in include possibility to download the 3D models into the printer so you don't have to plug your USB memories in and out if you don't want to. Another nice uh, feature with this one is uh, autofill with the uh, resin. So if you run long prints with a lot of parts, there is uh, never a risk that you run out of resin in your uh, jar. It will automatically refill. So let's get started. We'll go to uh, cgtrade.com. Here we'll search for the two 3D model set we'll use in this uh, video tutorial. It's um, CAT 003, which is German catenary in HO scale. And this set includes all the parts you possibly can need to make uh, a German catenary installation. And as you see, the price is $8, which is uh, about what two masts, uh, if you buy them in the shop, cost. We also need the Line 003, which is a line side detail set. So this one's five dollars and can't help myself comparing. Here is Auhagen. They have a similar set with some uh, cabinets and uh, also these concrete cable canals. Unpainted plastic parts, 950. So, well, we make big savings um, by using 3D print instead. Plus, we get a better detail. Here is our catenary now uh, in the phone app. So we click on that drawing 
and then it's just to make sure that the uh, print head is uh, free of uh, any old prints and that you have resin in the jar at least to start with and it's just to click print now the print will get started so uh, first thing which happens is that it downloads the, the the 3d model into the printer and once that has been done the print process starts the printer will now run for a few hours printing all the details we need meanwhile we'll get started on the module and the theme is modern lines and for this i've purchased the pico sl102 which is concrete tights and the code 100 tracks now if you're running a three rail system the Marklin style with a slider under the locomotive then you also need this one it's uh, item sl18 and it's the center rail for three rail system uh, this one's uh, provided in length of uh, one 0.8 meters so two flex tracks and the cost is five euro here's uh, another part which is used for the turnouts the switches i've read in forum that this works poor with a really long turnout but as long as you use the standards it shouldn't be a problem there's also another alternative available from a company called Weichenwalter. They provide uh, also PUCOS or standard, the, the three rail, center rail. And this is a very discreet, it looks fantastic, but it's uh, four times as expensive as the Pico one. And I have not read uh, too much about how this works with the turnout, but uh, it's at least an option. Before getting started on laying tracks, we also need a pack of rail joiners. And as you might have guessed, these are used to join flex tracks together. So to fit those, you need to cut away the fitting on the, tra on the, on the tie with a knife like this. So remove those and then you can slide the dro j rail joiners onto the track like this so here's the module it uh, is built from two inch or 50 millimeter thick styrofoam and on that i've glued the track bed from woodland scenic this is item st1474 i often get a question on how to prepare landscape surfaces easy and fast over large areas purpose is just to get rid of that styrofoam or plywood look so what i do first i apply PVA glue over the entire surface then this putty this putty is a concrete based putty which doesn't shrink or crack uh, it's a powder so I mix in water and then I get a putty which looks like this and I kind of smear that over the entire surface just to break that uh, pattern of flat surfaces and if you have and if you like to have uh, rocks these are casted this is a woodland scenic casting for rocks and the rocks it themselves are casted from gypsum or paris plaster and i just simply push them into the potty and they will sit perfect there there is no need for additional adhesive at this point after about 20 minutes it's possible to smoothen the surface of the potty somewhat it's easier to do it now than to sand it later and when done it looks like this so now we can put the tracks in place i spread pva glue over the entire track bed uh, this is not an issue using this soft track bed from woodland scenic otherwise if you're using cork you should go for a kind of rubber potty or something to fix your tracks to avoid getting all of that noise into the board or sub road but anyway so here I'm carefully aligning the tracks with the center of the track bed and then connecting the next flex track section. And it looks like this. Now we'll make a homemade ballast. And the purpose with this is to be able to perfectly match the color of your prototype. And at the same time, we get a cost reduction of about 70% compared to buying this uh, ballast from your manufacturer. And the walnut shells 
uh, we're using is uh, I've been told that it's the same material as Woodland Scenic is using for their ballast. And as you see here, I've made a, a mix, uh, colored this um, walnut shells into different colors. The walnut shells, the crushed walnut shells, can be purchased from your guns and ammunition shop. It's used as a polishing agent. So let's color this walnut shells to brown. For that we need pigment. This can be bought in your uh, DIY store or in an artist shop. Take a portion of that into the container with walnut shells. Shake it somewhat and then pour it out on a piece of paper. What we're going to do now is to mist a mix of nine part water and one part isopropanol. This will help the pigment to go into the walnut shells and stay there. So we avoid color bleeding and miscoloring from this uh, ballast once it has dried. Now for this module, we're going to color the ballast modern gray. So I will be coloring this uh, crushed walnut shells with the zinc white pigment and it takes quite a bit to get a good and uniform gray color like this. Now when coloring bright colors like this, which is quite far away from the original brown color of the walnut shells, it's a good thing to repeat the coloring process twice to be sure to have a solid a gray color. A rule of thumb I'm using to calculate how much ballast I need is uh, one deciliter per linear meter of tracks. And if you have dual mainline, dual track mainline, like I'm building in this diorama, then there will be an extra amount in between the tracks as well. But uh, otherwise, one deciliter per linear meter. Okay, now it seems like our print has completed. We get a notification in the app. All we need to do then is just to remove the printout from the print head uh, clean it in alcohol and then post cure it either in the sun or in a post curing device. Before we getting into the actual ballasting of the tracks, I would like to glue the mast fittings or the sockets in place. This way we make sure that they sit on a flat surface rather than having ballast underneath. I also want to glue the concrete cable canals in place ahead of ballasting. This helps uh, to keep the ballast uh, in place, but also these are not very easy to assemble once the ballast is there. One full section of overhead wire is 360 millimeters. So I measure the distance between them using that and the exact position using the tool for mast placement. However, I'm using my old plywood piece, which has the same purpose. Now I glue the mast sockets in place on this module using fast set glue and speed up the curing process by using accelerator. However, if it's a plywood construction, then I prefer screwing these in place. With all the mast sockets in place, we can glue also now the concrete cable canals, canals in place. I'm using Elmer construction for that or PVA glue. The landscape surface is also painted. For this I use uh, acrylic paint. This is burnt umber brown from Liquitex. And uh, I use this to paint the entire landscape just to get it off that white color and then the pieces of rock is uh, painted in gray same color is used to paint the sides of this uh, track bed this way i avoid black shining through and a thin ballast and as i said i paint also the rocks with this flat gray. Now it's time to paint the sides of the tracks or the rails uh, with the same burnt umber brown. In general I typically spray this with the uh, airbrush uh, but since we're keeping the kind of uh, newish gray paint here on this modern line I can't really cover the, the tracks with the paint enough so then I paint the rail sides 
with a paintbrush instead. Okay, then we can start to ballast. For this, I'm using a, a baluster tool, which is kind of distributing the ballast uniformly over the tracks and in between the ties. I also sprinkle ballast in between the tracks for this dual track main line like this and then we can knock with a paintbrush this compresses the ballast between the ties and before we vacuum the excess ballast i use a paintbrush to remove it from the concrete canals i then put a sock over the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner so i can collect the excess um, ballast which has landed on top of the ties so i can reuse that at a later time now before we apply glue to this we need to reduce the surface water tension this is made using a sprayer we're spraying a mix between water and alcohol it's a one part alcohol and nine part water so it kind of gets uh, all wet and then we can um, apply the glue this is a pva glue 50 percent and 50 percent water leave that to dry overnight and then we can airbrush the rail sides with brown paint this is burnt under brown as well now i want to highlight the edges of the ties as well as the pattern which is molded into each tie for this i use the same uh, uh, color pigment or you can use uh, pastel chalk powder this uh, powder treatment will uh, add the contours but also it will give a kind of more a stone like texture to the surface all right so it looks kind of nice now we're gonna cover the landscape using this um, basic method i use uh, when we want fast results over large surfaces first uh, cover the entire surface with glue i use uh, elmer construction or, or pva glue for this and then i sprinkle the entire surface using woodland sanic earth blend and then in some spots where there is uh, glue i sprinkle in green blend and then i take a wide soft brush and push the turf into the wet glue so it sticks however this action also reduces the appearance of like sprinkled turf so it looks more natural after this now we're gonna paint some of those masts we printed previously so this is what they look like they are printed using uh, anycubic craftsman apricot color and gray so here are the cabinets also as well they're going to be painted in green here are the line side telephone sheds and the line side phones they will be painted gray the color of the masts uh, both uh, here in the country where i live in sweden and in germany have a kind of olive light olive green color so i mix two parts olive green with one part white acrylic paint and we're painting complex parts with the inside the surfaces like this the easiest way is to airbrush it but it's of course possible also to paint brush if you like and i use the same color mix for the cabinets as well but for the houses they look kind of transparent because the walls are so thin so i I prefer coating them with black before I coat them in this uh, light gray color. Otherwise they, they keep looking kind of transparent, which isn't all that pretty. The mosts look like this when they have dried. Now we're ready to assemble the parts which holds the overhead wire. This is done using fast set glue. Now, if you're powering the trains uh, with DCC, MFX or analog power uh, through the overhead wires you might want to use these uh, uh, steel uh, holders instead and in the kit there uh, or in the set there is uh, provided isolators with the through hole 
and they are made for uh, 0.5 millimeter steel wire, piano wire or copper wire, if you like. The plastic outleggers will, uh, uh, under all circumstances, hold overhead wire, so you don't have to worry about that. It's not a matter of uh, strength, it's a matter of electric conductivity. So last thing I do, I paint the isolators and I do that uh, when uh, all is assembled. It's easier to hold on to the stuff as well as the handles on the electric cabinets. The cabinets are glued in place using fast set glue and the masts are just pushed into the sockets like this. The advantage with this is that you can now remove the masts when you later apply static grass, bushes and stuff like that so you don't damage the masts in that process. And this is what it looks like. We also want this uh, line side telephone. This is uh, the transformer mast with uh, one Ausleger. Then this is the concrete cable canal running alongside the main line. And this is the standard uh, mast with the Ausleger painted and in place. And this is the rocks. I also added black wash on top. Then it looks like this. Well, not all that bad. Cost reduction plus increased detail and uh, accuracy in, in coloring of ballast. Uh, it's a, it's a, for sure a, a good combination. Did you know that this uh, channel is uh, totally dependent on the supports from viewers like you? Uh, so think of this as a magazine subscription. Get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from, you know, like one, two dollar per month. Or make off a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the, in the video description below. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have use for, uh, for the methods and materials presented in the video. Uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, enable that little bell next to the subscription button and you will get a notification once next video is published. Until that happens, see ya.